Hey guys, it's Wednesday night, Wednesday night, Wednesday night Oasis. It is September 14th. 14th, we're just about halfway through September. We've been on this Wednesday night series uh, titled Looking the Other Way, and we've been going back in the archive, uh, archives a couple of years, well, maybe a little more, and uh, looking at a series we had done on Sunday mornings titled Looking the Other Way, how sometimes in our world we get so caught up in things that are not right being said to be normal, and we sometimes look the other way and, and turn our head to it. Well, in this last message, uh, I think you're going to get something, really get something out of it, um, because we're, we're talking about obeying God and, and how uh, we kind of do that. You know, we kind of do that. And so you watch this. Uh, it's To be honest with you, right now it is just about 4 o'clock, and uh, you'll, be able, you'll be able to watch this about 6 o'clock. So um, I hope you'll be able to watch it at 6. So it's just about being the live presentation here. So it's, this is going pretty close to live. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I keep praying for those who are hurting today. Continue to pray for Ron and Sue and, and uh, you know, Penny. And, and uh, you know, Penny's doing, doing a lot better. And uh, really just uh, the people that we know around us that, uh, that uh, is part of our church family. Uh, so um, uh, continue to pray for me, of course. But you should always do that in good and bad times because... You know, I need a lot of prayer. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, uh, love you guys. Let's go to that service. And uh, um, I think you're going to get something out of this. Thanks for being with us. See ya. Bye-bye. Genesis chapter 1. Open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. Hey, next week we're starting a brand new series, and I have a question for you to think about before that time comes. Uh, have you ever felt stretched to breaking point? Have you ever felt like you've been stretched to that breaking point? Well, in our next series starting next week, we're going to talk about ways that, that God's ways for giving us to be able to not just endure the things that we face, but how we can thrive in that. Uh, even during the times in our lives when we feel stretched to the most, to the max, we can still walk in victory. So in the next series, we're going to be looking at learning to live with pressure, learning to control our tongues. How's that one? Uh, learning to deal with problems, because we all face problems. And then the final message will be learning to stretch your faith, because that's what it's going to come down to. The truth is, in our society today, as Christ followers, we're all going to have to live lives that include pressure, include tension, and, and we see things like compromise all around us. And we want to invite you to join us if you're watching from home for this next series because you might just be feeling a little stretched 
where you are right now. Today, I want to ask you a question. Do you ever battle when it comes to listening or obeying? You ever battle when it comes to listening or obeying? Now, you all can say yes to that because that would be true for all of us. Uh, I don't know about you. Now, this may not, this doesn't happen to me, but I'm driving down the road. It doesn't happen to me. I'm driving down the road and I'm on the freeway and it says 55 miles an hour on the freeway and I'm driving. And do you know how fast I drive? 60. Because I could drive five miles over the speed limit, right? Uh, it's, it's just a little bit of sin. It's just a little bit over the law. We all do things like that in our lives. Well, we, we, don't do, we don't do it exactly. We don't obey exactly. But the truth is, regardless if you're a young child or you're someone uh, older, we all have this difficulty with obeying. For the last four weeks, we've been looking at this series titled Looking the Other Way. And we've been looking at this sin that comes into our lives that everybody deals with, and it's so much around us, sometimes we just kind of look the other way. We kind of say, well, it's just the way it is. We'll just let it go by. And we have to ask ourselves the question, what does God think about it? Well, in this last message, we're going to focus on this thing called disobedience. You know, the Bible is full of things that talk about obeying God and disobeying God. It's all throughout the Bible. In week one of our message, we talked about worrying and how it drives a groove into our character. Here's our character, and when we worry, it makes a little groove in there because it keeps going around and around. The second thing we talked about is this thing called gossip that also makes a groove in our character. Last week we talked about consumption and lack of self-control. And we said how that can affect our character as well. You see, all these things have a way of affecting our character. And the Bible has a lot to say about it. The Bible, uh, Bible scholars say that this business of obeying God is the central idea to the Bible. That when you would take all the things in the Bible and you would sum them up, I think that what happens is we see obedience is a big part of this. Obeying God in the things that we do, in how we speak. It starts from Genesis all the way to Revelations. And it applies to all of us because each of us have been born. We've all been created. We've been created in the image of God to be used for the purposes of God. So the truth is this, we have to learn at a very early age, those of you who have little children, they have to learn at a very early age the importance of obeying our parents, obeying our grandparents, obeying the people who raise us, for, uh, for those who have children, uh, obedience is something that, that we desire from them. We want them to obey us, right? We want them to listen to us. We want them to do what we tell them to do. We're not doing it for our benefit. We do it for their own benefit. You see, that's what we want to focus on today as we talk about this thing called disobedience or obedience, depending on where we are. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come this morning, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for the opportunity we have to, to read your word, to study your word, to speak your word, to sing your praises this morning. And so, Lord, we pray as we look at this topic called obedience, that you would speak to each of our hearts, that you would help us to understand how this message affects each of our lives and what we should walk away knowing. Lord, guide us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you at Genesis chapter 1 yet? Let's begin by looking at verses 27 and 28. So it says this. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. 
male and female. He created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in numbers. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds of the sky, over every living creature that moves on the ground. Here's the first point in your notes this morning. We'll jump right in and get you to start writing right away. Obedience is rooted in a relationship with God. It's at the core of our relationship with God. Obedience is a part of who we are as Christ followers. You see, it's not about rules. It's not about following commands. It's about following our God and our Savior, our Lord and our Savior. It's about walking in his way. I think a couple of weeks ago, I talked about the fruit of the Spirit, and I said, we try to focus on doing the fruit of the Spirit, and Jesus says, follow me, and you'll have the fruit of the Spirit in your life. You see, it's not about, the Bible is not about the things that we can't do. A lot of people think the Bible is a book of no, 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 or yes, 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 yes. The Bible is about, follow me, and you'll know which way is right, which is wrong. I'll direct your path. I'll show you which way to go. You see, obedience happens because it's rooted in a relationship with God. And if we don't have that relationship with God, we find ourselves in a place where obedience to what? Because there's a lot of things being said. A lot of people saying, follow me. But listen, if someone says, follow me, if they're not following Jesus, don't follow them because you'll be going the wrong way. You'll be going the wrong place. That's why today, it, you might think this business of obedience, so oh, this is a message for young children. And I want you to know, it isn't. It isn't. Well, then this is a message for parents. And the answer is, no, it isn't. Because let me ask you a question while we get started. Who here is not a child of somebody? You see, we're all children of someone. We've all grown up. I, I, I had a mama and a papa. I mean, I had that, and, I, and they were part of my life. And here's, here's what I want you to understand as we get started. Our parents tell us what to do, not to make their lives easier, but to make our lives easier. Parents in our lives direct us in a certain way because they're trying to lead us down the right path. I don't know one parent, one father, who is walking with God that doesn't want his child to have everything in this world. And we're being called to obey. Now, as parents, let me talk to them real quick first. As parents or people who are overseeing other people, I want you to know we're all overseeing other people. And as we oversee other people, it's important for very young children to understand that they need to obey. Here's why. If your kids who are little won't obey you, how are they ever going to grow up to obey authority in their lives. It's very difficult because now you go from your parenting and kids must learn to come under you and obey you, not reluctantly, but joyfully. You see, when a person is able to do that, when a child is able to do that, they can grow up and now they're able to, to, to obey police officers. They're able to obey the law. They're able to obey the person that they work for. Have you ever known someone, no matter where they work, they always have issues with their boss? No matter where they work, there's always a problem with the person they work for. Why? Because they don't want to take direction. And you have to ask yourself, okay, now here's the part that'll kill you if you're an adult. God says, that when you obey authorities, you're obeying him. I'm going to show you that Bible verse. I didn't write that down, but it just came to me. That's a very true statement. 
And when we're obeying the people we work for, that's what we're doing. You see, the call of obeying God is not a call from a demanding king who is talking to his royal subjects. You see, God commands us to obey out of love. He wants us to obey out of love for him. He doesn't want us to do it reluctantly. I think about what Jesus did. And I think about how we're coming up pretty soon, believe it or not, it'll be Easter, right? It's right around the corner. I think it's next Tuesday, not really, but it's coming up fast, right? It comes up fast. And you think about Jesus' death and what he did on the cross and how he paid the price for us. And you think, how can I not obey me, obey God, since he loved me that much, since he gave everything for me? You see, his sacrifice for us affect, affects every choice that you and I can make in life. Every rebellious moment in life, God still loves us anyway. Every time we sin and we have sin come into our lives, God loves us anyway. Every mistake that we make, guess what? God loves you anyway. Everything that we do against God, when we do things against God, when we know that we're disobeying God, God loves us anyway. You see, we've been washed in the blood of Jesus. We've been forgiven for our sins. And we have this great love that's given to us. How do we not obey? You see, the truth is that God loved us so much that his love is calling us to obedience. Every person understands that God loves them. But here's the question. Do we always obey him? Even though we're called to obey out of love, the love we have for him. Everyone knows that their parents love them. Now, they drive you crazy sometimes, right? Your parents drive you crazy sometimes. But there's no doubt they love you. And God is calling you to obey. Uh, look at what it says in Exodus 20, 12. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land of the Lord, your God that your God is giving you. Let me read that again. Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. He's not saying if you don't honor your parents, they're going to take your life. He's not saying that. He's saying that if you want to live the right way, follow God. Walk in his way. Walk in the ways of life. Because he wants to lead you someplace that you don't seem to know the answer to or where to go. In Exodus 20, 12, uh, it, it, it goes into the Ten Commandments. God spoke it to Moses. Moses gave it to the people. Then the Ten Commandments is God saying, look, here's what it takes for you to be set apart for God. Here's what it takes for you to walk in my way. Honor your father and your mother. Guess what it doesn't say? And this is the part, I should have wrote this because I would have wrote it a little differently. Uh, honor your parents uh, when you agree with what they say. Isn't that what we think it reads sometimes? Honor your mother and father when, when you agree with what they say. My, my parents, now I, I was blessed because my parents took every opportunity to discipline me, but they taught me along the way. Here's, 
you're in trouble and here's why. Here's what you were supposed to do and here's what you did. And here's the consequences to those actions. Do you think God does that with us? I see God doing the same thing with us. Look, you know what you're supposed to do, but you chose to do this instead. And now here are the consequences of what your actions are. Now, parents understand this because let me tell you something. Most parents, as children, we think our parents loved discipline in us. But nobody wins in that situation because parents don't like coming down on their kids. They, they don't want that for them. But they know that they have to do that. They have to be that way because if they don't, then what will happen is that your kids won't know how to honor authority in their lives if right off the bat they don't honor the, their parents, if their parents don't honor God. The, the truth is you can't be a parent or someone who oversees other people and have the attitude, do as I say, not as I do. It never works. It never works. They will always do what you do, not what you say. You see, here's a point in your notes. Obedience grows from honor. Obedience grows from honor. That's number two. The Bible uses the word honor, and it's important for us to understand that because what does it really mean? What does it mean? Now, I'm going to throw you a big curveball here because I'm going to give you the biblical definition of the word honor in honor your father and mother. Honor equals make heavy. Make heavy. Well, wait a minute. What does that mean? It's an actual weight. It means actual weight, putting something on them, adding something on them. You see, when you're walking in, in God's ways, you can put a burden, the burdens that you battle with, on your parents. You put this weight on what they say, and you know what? Instead of being hard on them, it gives them joy. Because, hey, I, I, I know my dad said this, and I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do what he said because he's been around a little longer than me. Dad, I'm doing that. And then, you know what, dad goes, wow, you really listened. That's great. I'll help you. It's a burden. It's not a burden. It's a, it's a joy of life. You see, to, to parenting, it's, it's this thing. Now, we can put weight on our parents, and it could be good weight or bad weight. What's better, holding a three-pound puppy in your hand? named Prissy. Prissy? A three-pound puppy in your hand or a three-pound snake. Pick the puppy, right? Pick the puppy. The puppy will bring you joy. The snake, unless you're some wild man, you, you, won't, you wouldn't have much joy from that, right? So look, there is a difference, and God is calling us to bring joy and honor to our parents. You see, uh, Disobedience brings dishonor. I found myself uh, years ago selling uh, computers to a big company, big corporation. And I did my best. I did my spiel and did all those kinds of stuff, my presentation. And the person in charge says, okay, give us the weekend and I'll call you Monday. Well, Monday call, came by, no call. Tuesday came by, I get a phone call. And it's the lady that heads up this company for purchasing computers for the whole company. And she says, I have to ask you a question. Is your dad's name Joe Gambino? And I said, well, yes. And, and she says, did he live in New York? Yes. 
Was he a tailor? Did he make men's suits? I'm thinking this is a joke at this point. And I go, well, yes, he did. She says, I was telling my dad that I met this guy and his last name was Gambino and he wants to sell his computers. And his dad said, you know, in the Garmin district in New York City, I used to buy all my suits from this guy named Joe Gambino. And he made everything perfect. He cared how that suit fit me more than I cared how it fit me. And he wouldn't let me walk out of there. So, so here's, here's my marching orders, she says. I have to buy all my computers from you for the next year because of your dad. You see, here's the story, really. I was honored from my father who's been gone a long time. But the truth is that there wasn't going to be one thing wrong with everything I sold them because you know who I represented? My father. You see, as children of God, here's the deal. When people deal with you, they shouldn't run into anything wrong because do you know who you represent? Your father who's in heaven. You see, I never want to call myself a Christ follower and then be a cheater or do the wrong thing or not treat people right. Oh, do we make mistakes? We do. Do we mess up? Sure. But our goal in life is to walk in the footsteps of the one who leads us, our Father. Look at what it says in Luke 17, 33. Whoever tries to keep their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life will preserve it. That's a little strange, isn't it? Whoever, wants to, whoever tries to keep their life loses it. And whoever loses their life preserves it. Do you know why you and I um, disobey? We disobey because we want things our way. When our parents direct us to do something and we disobey, it's not because they're wrong. It's because we want it our way. We want to do it our way. We want things our way. Well, okay, so we're talking about parents and kids, and kids are like that. Kids will do that. But what does it say when you and I disobey God? What does it say? You see, to our parents, we say, I know better than you. And to God, we say, I know better than you. I want to do it my way. I want to go my way. Well, I don't know. I don't know that I'm saying that to God. Well, yes, you are. Because when we disobey what God says, we think we know better than God. It happens in, in many different areas of our lives. Ephesians 6.2 says this, Honor your father and mother, which is the first command with a promise. All the commands have promises. But this one has something following it because it's so important for us to learn how to honor each other, even. Ephesians uh, 6, 3, look, it's the next verse. So that it may, it may go well with you and that you may enjoy life on the earth. When you honor your father and mother, you will receive the promise of God that says, it may go well with you, and you will receive and enjoy life. Mark Twain, you've heard of Mark Twain, right? Mark Twain wrote this little, little thing. I don't know if I put it in your notes or not, but here's what it says. When you're a kid, 13, you should uh, put them in a barrel and feed them uh, through the little hole on the side of the barrel. And when they become 16, plug up the hole. You get what I'm saying? See, because they're trouble, right? When they're 16, they're, that, that's, uh, that, that's not me now. That's Mark Twain. So write him. So, so when it comes to Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, it implies that 
you should be worthy of honor of your children. Are you worthy of honor of your children? Do you say, do as I say, not as I do? Do you exasperate your children? Do you give them reasons to want to go against you? Listen, the truth is this, that, that God is calling us to honor our parents, but it's also calling us to be worth being honored, to be people who, who are worth being honored. Listen, the truth is that I know that there are many people here today who are here or people watching from home and their parents uh, weren't the best examples in life. That they beat them down. Some parents you know, cause their children to, to just feel like they're nothing. But here's the thing to those people. God says that you are something. If your parents are wrong, God is never wrong. He says you're the apple of his eye. That, that he created you for a purpose. That you and I are here today, not because, not because of any uh, accident, but because God ordained it to happen. It predestined it to happen. He set it up. You see, God wants us to walk in obedience to him because he knows what's best for us. You know, Ephesians 6.1, children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. You see, for those of you who are watching today or here, you have to know that as parents, you represent Jesus to your family, to your kids, to your nephews and nieces, to those people in your life who look up to you. You see, they know who you are. They know what you believe. They know that you call yourself a Christian. And I don't know if you realize this or not, but each one of us are always under a magnifying glass. People want to see how you're going to respond. Okay, Scott calls himself a Christian. Let's see what happens when trouble comes into his life. How's he going to act? Do you think that happens? It happens every day of our lives. We're always under the magnifying glass. We're always being tested. Here's something. There's a Michelle Anthony. Have you ever heard of her? She wrote a book called Spiritual Parenting spiritual parenting it was a book i had to read one time in my training and here is a here's a here's something that she wrote in that book it says in the midst of training our children it is dangerous to confuse two things that ought to never be misunderstood we shouldn't confuse loving a person with accepting a behavior in other words I love you, son or daughter, but I'm just not loving what you're doing. Your behavior is wrong, and it needs to be fixed. It doesn't make it that you don't love them or you love them less. If nothing else, it means you love them more. So when you're disciplining your children, you're not doing it out of hate or anger. You're doing it out of love for them because you're teaching them how to trust in God, how to walk in his way. You represent God in your life. Your children need to understand that. Jesus was a tremendous model for us. He modeled for us how we are to love one another and care for another. He did that to death. John 14, 15. I could write a whole sermon a whole series of sermons on this one passage. If you love me, keep my commands. In other words, if you, if you love me, obey me. Obey me. It's the perfect example of how we are to treat authorities in our lives. 
our parents in our lives, uh, how we're supposed to act in the workplace. I heard someone this morning, believe it or not, he was talking about obedience, a pastor on television. And he says, you know what causes companies the biggest problem? It's not that people don't know what they're doing, is that they can't show love towards one another. That they, that they, there's friction and arguing and they disobey one another because I know more than you. What are you telling me what to do? Why is this happening? Why is that? And all of this is going on. And he says, that causes companies bigger problems than anything else. So they're always trying to figure out a way. How do we have team building events? So people learn how to get along with each other. How do they grow together? You see, God is calling us to love him and obey him, to walk in his way, to be Jesus to others. Love your, love God, what is it? Love your God with all of your what? Heart, soul, mind, right? Spirit. And then what's the second part of that? Love your neighbors as yourself. Well, can we leave the second part out? Can we just do the first? No, because the second one is just as important as the first. You see, we're called to walk in a way that's suiting to our Father, in His way. Genesis 2, 23 and 24. The man said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. For she was taken out of man. And then I underline this part, verse 14. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and unites to his wife, and they become one flesh. You see, God wanted us to know that as young people, there's a way of honoring your parents. And then as older children, as we are, there's a way of honoring our parents, but the way is different because we're supposed to leave our parents and cling to our spouses. And, and so the way we do it as adult children is that you and I are called to stay in touch with our parents. Call them up. How about that? Those of you who have adult children, doesn't it put a smile on your face when your kids call you? And you're not the one calling them all the time. Listen, stay in touch. Pray for them. How about that? Pray for your own parents. Because Lord knows they need it. They need your prayers. And then care for their needs. Care for their needs. I have to tell you this. Uh, there's nothing better uh, my parents loved when I was younger and I would sit down and I was really pretty young, 13, 14 and, and below, sit down with my dad and get his advice. You would think I would have like slapped him in the face because now I'm like asking him advice. brings great honor to your parents when you just call them and tell them you love them and ask them for advice. Ask them what they think. I, I have to say that I had a perfect example of this when I was very little. Um, my grandmother was bedridden. Couldn't leave the house. And nobody wanted, my mom had, had five sisters and none of them wanted mom. And my mom said, I'll take her now. I mean, not even, not even thinking about it, like, no, uh, she's coming with me, right? So my mom is in this house, little bitty house, little bitty house, three bedroom house, a, a mother in bed, five kids, five sons, and she would go and take care of her mother. She would come out and five boys there, five boys. Like that. And you know what she would do? 
she'd begin to clean the house. But she didn't clean the house. She was like the Pied Piper. She'd sing and cling. And she would dance around and cling. And you know what these five little boys were doing? They were dancing around and cleaning with her and helping her and do this. And you think about that and you go, well, that's no big deal. It's a huge deal. Because here's a woman and her husband who gave up many things because they honored their mother and father. Now my grandfather had passed away and my, mom, my grandmother was the only one left. And she taught us all, one at a time, go see if grandma needs anything. Bring her a glass of water. Well, you don't know this about me. I've got this thing about shoes. I'm like a woman. I, I like to buy shoes. I have, I have a bunch of tennis, not like a woman. I don't mean, cut that part out. I, 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 I like tennis shoes. I like different kinds of tennis shoes and stuff. You know who did that? My grandmother. My grandmother did that because when I was just this little guy, like two years old, I'd bring my grandmother a glass of water and she'd give me a dollar. And my mother would say, no, he's doing that for free. He's not doing it for a dollar. And she'd say, no, that's okay, because I want him to take that dollar and save it to buy a pair of shoes. So at a very young age, I bought my first, my own first pair of shoes. They were PF Flyers. I bought them and had a magic whistle with it, with a secret compartment, and you'd put your money in there and you'd blow this whistle and you could, but see, all of that has nothing to do with the story. But the story is this. You see, the little things in life, do you ever find yourself now saying, oh my gosh, I sound like my mother. I sound like my father. What they would say is what I say. What, what is going on here? You see, you have such an ability to touch the lives and show them and teach them. You see, I serve God's son. I serve God nephew. I serve God daughter or niece. And when you are following me, you are honoring me. You're honoring God. How about that? Listen, it changes the whole business of honor. Here's number three. Obedience thrives through love and respect. The truth is God's kindness, God's kindness leads all of us to repentance. We kind of get a little bit mixed up. We think that being strict is the thing that brings repentance on children. Sometimes it brings rebellion. And God says, look, God brings us to repentance through his kindness, through his love. It's, it's not that God causes us to walk in his way because he'll shout at us if we mess up. So you see, he has a better plan for all of us than misery. He has a better plan than you as a parent. He has a better plan as you as just looking for a moment of peace and quiet. He, he doesn't want us to say to those people that we have authority over, you know, I'm just, I know how that person is. I'm just going to look the other way. We're not called to do that. You see, your home and relationship can be defined by your love and your respect. Remember I told you about my parents and the kids. I see some kids talk to their parents today in a way I wouldn't talk to my worst enemy. In my house, my parents commanded honor and respect and I was never hit once. Never spanked once, because my parents didn't do that. They took things away, and they said, you can't have this for now, and you can't do that. But no spankings, no nothing. But here's the deal. 
I see kids cussing at their parents. And in my house, those words aren't used. We didn't use those words. We wouldn't think twice about it. We wouldn't even do it. We were at a party one time, all grown up. My oldest brother, which was my half-brother, I got a half-brother, and he there, and he was a grown man with kids and a grandkid. And we're sitting at this table, and he goes, I have a joke. And he starts telling this joke, and my dad says, wait a minute. Your mother, and there's other women at this table. If this is not a joke that I would like you to tell, then I want you to think about it before you tell it. He's saying that to a grown man. My half-brother Steve, his name was Steve, said, never mind, I won't tell it. I didn't think about that. Come to find out he did the same thing with his own kids. That what he had learned about this honor business was something that he, he, he took throughout his whole life. I want to give you three quick points and we're almost done. Here we go. You can show love and respect to others by releasing their behavior to God. Listen, I know that there are people that have children or others in their lives that are challenged, that they battle things like addictions. And Lord knows you try to do everything you can. And sometimes the one thing that we forget to do is release their behavior to God. Lord, I need your help with this. I release my son or my daughter or my cousin or my nephew, my niece, whoever it would be in your life. Release them to God. And then point B, you can show love and respect to others by listening to your children or the people in your world when you mess up, when they mess up. So often, we're so ready to jump on someone when they mess up. And sometimes, you know, listening goes a long way. Really listen to what they did and try to help them through it. Number C, you can show love and respect to others by honoring them for being children of God. Ever meet people you just don't like very well? People that in your life that come into your life that, you know, I'd rather just not be around them. I'd just rather not be with these people. God created them. And we have to show them honor even though we may not like them very well. I don't know where you sit today. I want to ask you for a moment to bow your heads with me. Will you do that right now? And I want to take a moment and ask you to ask yourself, what is it in my life that I need to release to God? What is it that I'm trying to fix and fix and fix, but I can't fix it because I'm trying to do it on my own? Where in your life did you disobey God that you need to ask him, Lord, forgive me for that? I want to take a moment in in this silence. Will you just tell God, not out loud, but to your just between you and him, will you tell God what that thing is that you need help with? Will you tell him now? See, as your head is bowed, maybe this morning you need prayer because uh, I want to encourage you to come up and and have Ken and, and Ron pray with you this morning because there's power in prayer. And so if you need prayer this morning, you come up to, to Ken and, and, and Ron and, and they will pray with you because maybe this morning you'll find yourself going through these things, this thing called life, 
and you've been trying to do it all alone. Maybe you're tired. Ever been so tired? And maybe you need a savior today. Uh, maybe you need uh, to, to leave this service this morning and, and, and you need to be more walking in Jesus' way. Maybe you know that. And maybe you need help with that. Let me ask you this morning, as you're watching from home, you can pick your heads up now, sorry. Uh, as you're watching from home, today we're talking about obeying God. But the truth is, how can you obey God when you haven't taken the steps to accept him as your Lord and Savior? You see, Jesus wants to come into your life. The Holy Spirit wants to come in and guide us. And instead of us looking the other way, why don't we look towards him, the one who is the perfecter of our lives? I want to invite you to pray with me. I want to ask you all to pray with me out loud. I want you to repeat after me if you'd like to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. I accept you now as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name.
for the children around the world without a as we leave this place may everything we do everything we say honor you father it's our prayer that you would use us in a mighty way use us lord to reach people who don't know you father we pray for the people that in our week ahead that we're going to meet that have no clue as to who you are help them to be receptive help us to walk in confidence and Lord help us Lord to to lead them maybe one step closer to you this week it's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said Amen. Amen. Amen.